truly fantastic as they huddled. They patted each other on the back and they got ready for the challenge to come. And this is going to be a massive challenge. The Tempe Super League Grand Final of 2004 is about to get underway. The most eagerly awaited Grand Final in years. Paul Deacon gets us in motion, a deep kickoff as you would expect. And let's see what happens over the next 80 minutes. It will be absolutely fascinating. And look at that charge on the kickoff there. McKenna was buried by four Bradford attackers. That was a point I was making, Eddie. There are surprised that Leeds, who won the toss, elected to receive. They selected ends. They will be put themselves under pressure straight away. Richie Mathers takes the fourth tackle of the grand final. It's Matt Diskin now, and here is Danny Ward, a young man who provides a link with the last Leeds title-winning team in 1972. His father was a teenage hooker in that team. The kick from Sinfield is straight into the arms of Leslie Bionicolo. Well, the Volcano drives it forward. Well, that's another surprise packet. Ball has come free. Was it a knock-on? again. That's Play right. off. Now the referee has had the call from the touch judge. It's a knock-on, and Leeds will get the head and feet. Well, it was going to be a surprise packet. I didn't think that they would be kicking to this big fella, Vinicolo. But they obviously had a plan, and Vinicolo lost control in the first instance, and that is a wonderful start for Leeds. They kicked early in the tackle count. It was suggested by Ant Andrew Farrell in the, the studio in the build-up for this game. And they have come up trumps. It's Sinfield who plays the ball to Danny Maguire, and he now is Danny Ward. Good drive forward by Ward. They're 30 metres away from the Bradford line. It's with Ryan Bailey. Bailey, who scored his first try of the season in the match against Wigan last week, three Academy Grand Finals for him. Here is Sinfield, dipping pass, and McKenna hands on. Pretty solid defence, they're all coming up as a unit. Diskin now will scamper from dummy half. It's a good run from Diskin, this. And he takes the... Oh, that's ball. got to be a penalty. The ball's come out, there's a chance here. There's a chance, it's a penalty, it is a penalty. Sinfield picked up the ball and went for the try himself, but the ball was stolen, as you see, from the signal by referee Mr Gans. Joe Vangadar definitely got the left <laughs> arm in underneath there, he knew they were under pressure. And Mathers it was who was so close. Leon Good. Price is not in this match, he's dislocated his shoulder, probably out of the Tri-Nations as well. Okay, boys, but Joe Vangadar's in it, and he stole the ball, Good. referee Good. offered the advantage, non-forthcoming. Tony Smith said, let's have the two points. Okay, Rightly so, right in front. Good refereeing there by Ganton. As you saw, the full-back Richie Mathers went extremely close. And the three of Wood uh, trying to stop him. This will calm the nerves down. Well, it will mean so much to Leeds to see themselves ahead on the scoreboard early. And Sinfield from almost bang in front. This for a 2 0 lead in the grand final. No mistaking from the Leeds captain. His 200th career game. And he has given Leeds an early advantage. And full credit to the Rhinos. They absorbed the pressure from the kickoff. It was good defence from Bradford that swallowed them up. And it was a kick downfield from Sinfield, right down the throat of Vinicolo. And the big winger came up with the error. And on that far side from the kickoff, it's Mark Calderwood. Oh, and Fielding leading the charge. And he only made about four yards forward before he was clobbered by the big man. Right, let's go to the press benches. They have the Harry Sunderland award winner to choose here tonight as man of the match. You'll also go home with a watch, of course, as we've already said. Dave Hadfield, you've got plenty of men to count tonight. We certainly have, and it's one of the oldest established individual awards in the game that we'll be voting for later on. There's three Bradford players have already won it. Michael Withers, Paul Deacon, Stuart Reardon. That's a bit of a sign that they have more big match experience. Tony Smith could have included more players with that sort of experience, but instead he's given a vote of confidence to players like Chev Walker and Mark Calderwood to do the job for him tonight. 
so we'll be watching Gare yeah, very carefully to see whether he's right about that. Wonderful kick there, great tactics, kicking early in the tackle count, dissecting the fullback and the winger, and they equally the good chase, but they've wasted it. Lack of concentration by the winger, Marcus Bai. The big fella, Vinacolo, he was tackled. And the second attempt, shake of the head from Tony Smith. He knows he has missed a golden opportunity to apply that pressure, keep Bradford within their own quarter. The penalty relieving the pressure, Robbie Paul restarts, here's Joe Vanganar, gets it to within 10 metres of the halfway line, tackled by Ward and also by Diskin. Robbie Paul, here is Stuart Fielden, who we hope will be one of the kingpins in the Tri-Nations tournament that follows next week and for the remainder of October. Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and we have some big contenders for Great Britain and New Zealand jerseys, particularly out there tonight. It starts next week, of course. Well, it started this morning, didn't it, with the 16-all draw, New Zealand against Australia. Here is Michael Withers. Leeds defence caught napping there. Wasn't the best play of the ball, but Robbie Paul did well to get it offload, and Leeds just stood there to watch. Great High kick. kick! Great kick from Yistin Harris, well taken, but Richie Mathers bundled over the dead ball line, and it's a drop out underneath the sticks, and Mathers is hurt by the looks of it. That's got to be one of the takes of the season. Look at the oncoming traffic. Bang! They were hunting. What a kick! Plenty of height. Well, you were talking, or they were talking in New Zealand this morning, Phil, about the very narrow in-goal areas in the test match between the Kiwis and the Kangaroos. There's not too much in the way of uh, in-goal areas here at Old Trafford tonight. There isn't, Teddy, but when you've got to play with a skill like Paul Deacon, it probably would only need to be a one-metre in-goal and he could still bring the ball down just inches short of the try line. The enthusiasm of both players when it's come to chasing kicks has been very impressive, as you would expect in a grand final. Speed of chase is really sometimes goes on to win the games at this level. And that goal line dropout is the perfect start now for Bradford to get back into the game after an uncharacteristic opening five or six minutes. Fielding will play the ball to Robbie Paul and he will give it to Jamie Peacock, who was succeeded as Man of Steel on Tuesday night by our guest this evening, Andy Farrell. Here now is Robbie Paul scampering from dummy half. Good ball and a little gap opens up and Paul is there. Brilliant hands. Harvey by the All came about from that wonderful high kick. They applied the pressure to the fullback Mathers. They came up with the football from the dropout, and this man has done it yet again. Different hairstyle, changes it week in, week out. But he's out there to do a job, and Robbie Paul did exactly that. Great offload, what a flick pass. Cover defense, they stopped. You cannot afford to let the man run from dummy half with so much ease like that, but the flick pass was out of the top drawer. What a try, what a man, what a player! Leslie Vinacolo will probably be called into that New Zealand squad this week for the Tri-Nations. It's his third consecutive grand final, but that is his first try at Old Trafford. But as you can see, a try scorer in four consecutive games now for the Bradford Bulls. Leslie Vinacolo with the first try of the 2004 Grand Final. Deacon underneath the posts. Bradford Bulls four, Leeds Rhinos two. You just can't afford to let anybody run across the face. It hesitates there, and you can see Diskin was doing just that. What is he going to do? They had to hang back, and by the time they got the sliding defence sorted out, what an effort. A little pass from Houston Harris. It enabled him. He looks cool and calm as Brian Noble, but he knows how important it is that the big fella has gone in at the corner. Sinfield then with the kickoff. It's a high hanging kick as well. It's a great kick, and Withers had to stretch for that. And it just allowed Leeds the opportunity to come in and 
put him on the ground before he made any progress. But Bangana will try and make meters forward now. What a take that was from Michael Withers. Bradford in possession then, deep in their own half of the field with Bradford, whose ball found Robbie Paul for that first try. Here is Stuart Fielden, tackled by Sinfield and Ward. Plays the ball to Robbie Paul, back it goes to Deakin. Possibility of the first 40-20 of the grand final. But Marcus Bay had dropped back to pick that up. And he takes on Paul Johnson, but gets the ball away to keep Senior. And Senior will attack the lead. Well, Adrian Morley's in our team as well. He's on the sideline alongside Phil and Bill Arthur. Adrian, I suppose you've got your Leeds Rhino scarf hidden away somewhere, have you? Yeah, that's, that's right. I've still got a uh, soft spot for Leeds. Uh, after the disappointment in that eight, hope they can uh, come back tonight and, uh, and beat the Bulls. And what have, do you think of the early moments? What do you think of uh, the way the game has started? Yeah, I think it's been uh, re real intense, uh, as you would expect from, uh, from a grand final. But I think Leeds look a bit nervous. I think they need uh, just to hold the ball a few more times, just to get the nerves out of the system. And, you know, with kicks like that, you know, hopefully, yeah, good stuff. Uh, and hopefully they can, they can calm down and, uh, and uh, get the job done. Great kick. Calderwood was after it, and Vinacolo picked up the ball and was bundled over the touching goal line. So it's going to be a dropout underneath their own sticks. Great work from Calderwood. Certainly was. Plenty of speed. You could see there that the ball went into the in-goal area. There's nothing that Vinacolo could do about it. He was had his back to the opposition. Calderwood chased him down. And again... That's the third time that Leeds have kicked early in the tackle count. It's a ploy that's working. OK, they're two points adrift, but they're in a good position. Chris McKenna takes the tackle. This is Diskin, and now here is Ryan Bailey for the Rhinos. 20 metres away, just gets over the 20-metre line before he has to surrender to the tackle. It's now with Kevin Sinfield, attacking the line busily. Good ball to Ward, very important tackle by Logan Swan. Diskin waits at dummy half. It's now with Sinfield, here is Maguire. Maguire looking for the runners, Mathers arrives. He jinks away, Mathers! And it needed good defence from Bradford. Last one here for Leeds, it's with Oh Maguire has dropped it. And what's more, Bradford gobbled the ball up in the shape of Logan Swan. Nerves, maybe, from Danny Maguire. Well, it wasn't the best pass, but he should have put himself into a better Second position. Here, Just a little bit too high. Golden opportunity just frittered away there. Third, that was great build-up by the Rhinos. Right and you'd have to say, Eddie, yeah, the inexperience of Danny Maguire showing there. Great offload from Harris, he finds Johnson. Johnson just inside his own half of the field. One thing we didn't mention in the build-up to this match is the fact that Leeds have never won a major final on this ground. And it's Mathers who's underneath that towering kick again. Great tactic shit again from the Bradford Bulls. Brian Noble obviously turning the clock back. Remember the World Club challenge against the Penrith Panthers. That was a ploy that absolutely split the Panthers apart. The high kick, the wonderful chase from the big forwards. But here come Leeds in the shape of Marcus Bai, the Papua New Guinea international. Can't go anywhere without his legs. And Lee Radford made sure that they were up in the air as uh, Stuart Fielden got the tackle in. Oh, and Ryan Bailey just slips in the challenge, but gets the ball away for all of that. Here is Ali Lawatiti, and he finds Keith Senior. Johnson and Reardon with the tackle. Maguire again, the dummy half, on the last tackle, looking for Sinfield, who is the kicker, and there's the kick, wide. Looking for Calderwood out there again, and Walker, Walker gets it. Can he get the ball away, Walker? Well, he did, but he only found touch. Great pressure from Bradley. Big problems for the prop forward. Joe Vanganar has a shoulder problem. I reckon he must have got into this game with that, and there you can see, great defence. Harassing Walker, knew he had to get rid of the ball, if he had any opportunity, any chance. So, Bradford, the ball is lost. Radford couldn't hang on. 
And they are slapping the backs for that challenge by David Turner. It was a classic, wasn't it? Made sure that he got underneath the rib cage. There is Joe Vanganar. Doesn't look too impressed, and by the expression, he could have finished the game completely. This is Walker. Well, sure that Bill Arthur will be chasing the news on Joe Vanganar as we watch Danny Ward driving the ball forward here for the Rhinos on the second tackle. It's with Sinfield now, and Sinfield flicks it to David Ferner. And Ferner was a little bit of a slack pass, but uh, Ward managed to hold on to it and flick it then to Ryan Bailey. I think Leeds realise they've got to keep this ball alive if they're going to get back into the Diskin. game. for Great Britain, surely for the Tri-Nations. And he has done his cause no harm there. Terrific try from Matt Diskin, the Leeds Rhinos Player of the Year this year. And he picked his moment superbly. This is the incident where Ferner just threw Radford to the ground. He really did a beautiful dummy on a step there. They held back. Jamie out. Peacock was caught out. But this is the first real run we've seen from Diskin. He's been quite happy to just farm the ball out from the dummy half position. And that's how important it means for the Leeds players. What a season. He knows, surely, in the back of his mind, that there's an opportunity of the Great Britain shirt dangling. He has performed <laughs> outstandingly this year. And they don't come much better than that. Remember, it was Leeds that allowed Robbie Paul to run across. On this occasion, it's the other hooker, Matt Diskin, that has done exactly the same. Only on this occasion, he threw the dummy and sighed through. Pretty poor defence. Brian Noble will not be happy with that. Kevin Sinfield then to add the extras here. Which he does with ease. And the Rhinos are ahead by eight points to four. It's a try at this. And Diskin with the latest. A lot of people tipping Matt Diskin to win the Harry Sunderland Award as man of the match. The only other hooker to win that award was my learned colleague, Mr. Stevenson, all those years ago. Sean McRae. Great start to the game. Um, I think what we've seen so far is the benefit of having a repeat set because both sides have scored. And we've seen how a side defending the repeat set can be punished. Interesting to note as well, Leeds have kicked maybe four times already in this game. And all four times have gone to Leslie Vinopolo's wing. So they want to put him under a lot of pressure. They want to make him turn and chase or have the ball go in the air to him and get numbers there and put him under plenty of pressure. That's obviously a tactic they've used. Sean, I just get the impression they want to try to tire the big fella out, don't they? There's no question, Steve. What they're trying to do is turn him around, put him under pressure, make him run, make him chase, and then keep him in play. If they can't get a repeat set, at least keep him, keep him in play, put him to the ground, make him play the ball. They're really working him over. We thought it might be one of the greatest finals that Rugby League has ever produced, and the signs after the first 17 minutes are good. Sinfield, again, a kick to Vinacolo. He will claim it, but look at what's ahead of him, and he flicks it then to Withers, who, let me tell you, was limping rather heavily just a few minutes ago, and I think we've got news of another injury. It was to Joe Vangan, I remember, Bradford Bulls, Bill Arthur. It's a shoulder problem for the big Bulls prop, and he's sitting on the sidelines, he's had treatment on the right shoulder. It doesn't look too serious, and uh, the signs are that he will be able to return to the fray later on. Johnson with the run, it's halted by the tackle from Lauatiti and Diskin again. Robbie Paul, here's Shontaine Harpy. Last tackle for Bradford and Robbie Paul running again from dummy half and he spreads it to Logan Swan. And Logan Swan can't get the ball away. The defence closed him down, he didn't hear the call, Logan Swan, he didn't know it was the last. Now he does because Leeds are in possession. Well, Brian Noble will be furious about that. We've got one of the best kickers out there, Justin Harrison, for the short kicking game, Paul Deacon. And for them to just turn the ball over near the halfway line will not impress the Bulls coach. Here is David Ferner, pops it up to Ali Lauatiti. You see there, eight to one runs from dummy half. 
It was something that they utilised. Remember, Tony Smith, he put Sinfield at standoff, Danny McGuire at halfback, and the runs between those two and, of course, Matt Diskin really ripped Wigan apart last week, and they're doing exactly the same tonight. Last tackle here now for Leeds. Maguire with a little stink over the top, will turn by Nicolo round, and Calderwood again dumps the big fellow over the line. Leeds will get another repeat set of six. Well, it would be wise for Leslie Vinacolo to send a telegram out to Leeds and say, hey, come on, there's another 12 players out there. I'm having to do all the work, and as Sean McRae rightly suggested, they just want to make sure that by the time it gets into the final quarter, Leslie Vinacolo will be out of petrol. Willie Poaching is on off the bench for the Leeds Rhinos. First tackle of the match for him, Phil Clark. Very worrying times for the Bradford Bulls. Not only are they trying to defend the line again, but when Leeds have had possession, they've been making eaters very, very easily. Bradford's struggling to get up and out of the thing. Things are looking pretty good for Leeds at the moment. It's Maguire who finds Senior. An angled run from Keith Senior. Here is Richard Mathers now. Mathers trying to scamper his way there. Quick hands by Sinfield, but perhaps a little bit too quick. Chev Walker, though, picks up the pieces for Leeds. Will attack down that side again. Did well to stay in the field of play. Harpy was all over him. Here is Calderwood. Now it's poaching again. Trying to burrow his way towards the line. Good Bradford defence on the last. Calderwood. And Calderwood gets the kick in. It bounces off a of Bradford knee. It's play on. It's Mathers. It's Mathers for Leeds. And still in play. It was touched backwards by big Paul Anderson. And Jamie Peacock snuffed out the danger for Bradford. Great approach play by Leeds there. They really put Bradford on the rack. OK, went backwards on that occasion. There you can see Anderson knocked it back. Certainly not a knock-on. But the pressure that the Bulls have been under at the moment, they'll be quite happy just to cart this ball up. Runs from dummy half. There you see the big fella, Vinacolo. But they are keeping a pretty keen eye on him. That was great work there by Matt Diskin. They are keeping a keen eye on him, but, of course, remember, it was Vinacolo who scored the first try for Bradford. Oh, this is a 40-20. Oh, no, the ball just took a wicked deflection back into the field of play with help from Marcus Pye. Well, you know, it's plays like that that just turn the complexion of this game. Was it, was his foot, on the line. Yeah, but was it on the time? Oh, and they've been caught offside. Bradford, Maguire wants to get on with it, but... Well, it'll be interesting there. Pretty difficult for the touch judge. They don't have the advantage of the replay. We do. Did he hit it at the same time as he... No, he had his leg up. That's fine. When he gets contact with the ball, the right leg is raised. Spot on. Great stuff from the touch judge. And great stuff from Marcus Bay as well. The ball just took a little dink towards the left-hand side and Marcus Bay made sure it wasn't going over the whitewash. Here now is Barry McDermott for the Rhinos. Well, I think they'll get 10 minutes out of Barry McDermott, try to close it all down, and don't be surprised if Tony Smith throws out Rob Burrow, especially in the last 10 minutes of this first half. This is Sinfield, here is Mathers. Mathers showed it to one, showed it to two. Well, will take the tackle over on that far side. Chev Walker waits for Leeds. Over the head of McKenna to Lau Chiti. And no, but pardon, Ryan Bailey it was. This is Diskin again. Last tackle. Get out and play. Sinfield. That was played at. This will be six to go. This will be six to go. It isn't. Well, I'm sure that Bradford played at that, and Kevin Sinfield shares that opinion. Well, it certainly looked as though Lee Ratford lunged across with the right boot. See it more clearly here, yes. That should have been back to six. Tony Smith says, what on earth is happening, Mr Ganson? Second, come on. Well, should have been six to go, but as it is, it's with... Oh, that was a high one. Bradford, from... now it was. Well, that's silly from yeah. McDermott. And it's against Stuart Fielden, of course. He just can't help himself at times. Right into the mush. We know that there's a feud between these two. Off the field of play, they keep saying, no, there's nothing between us, and yet, every year it continues, and I'm afraid he'll get a real telling off from the official, and rightly so. 
wants to calm things down. Mr. Ganson calling Kevin Sinfield and Barry McDermott to him. Not tonight, he says. Not tonight to Barry McDermott. And now the referee, he's going to try and keep the lid on this feud if he possibly can. No one's saying it's your good referee. You overreact. You leave me where I've got to deal with someone else as well. I'll deal with the problem. You just get on with it. All right? Difficult. It's difficult to let the referee deal with the problem. I know what he's saying, but human nature being what it is. I wonder what Adrian Morley makes of all that on the sideline. You know Mr Ganson well, Adrian. Yeah, I do, I do actually. Uh, <laughs> I think Barry's just a bit too excited. He got on wants to make a big impact, and uh, that's not the way to do it, but I know, uh, I know what he's thinking. Well, it was a bit high, and, uh, well, the referee now will try and keep, as I say, keep the lid on it if he can. Barry McDermott, of course. Missed the 1998 Grand Final, he released his autobiography, there he was again after Stuart Field and once more, released his autobiography this week, said he could actually have signed for Bradford earlier in his career. This now is Bradford with Radford looking to try and get over the line again with Vinacolo, one out of the way, dumps the ball back. They spread it to Deacon, Deacon then on the loop to Peacock. Peacock will attack the line, shows it to Johnson, keeps hold, Maguire of coaching are there. Steady defence from Leeds there, they weren't going to be sucked in, they made sure they went as one unit. That forward. was forward, it was. Forward Pratt. from Pratt to Johnson. Certainly was. And they've just come off the subs bench, Maybe just a little bit rusty at the moment, but got to say that you've got to point the finger at Paul Johnson, he overrun that pass. 25 and a half minutes gone of the grand final of 2004. Leeds with history beckoning, of course. They haven't won the title since 1972. Second back here. Shoot. They were beaten Shoot. by the Bulls at Headingley a couple of weeks ago. It ended a 13-match unbeaten Third. sequence. They are roaring to go. They think it might just have been the kick up the backside they needed to get them to Old Trafford. Well, they're here. Now, can they do it again? Here's Vinacolo again. Tips the ball inside to Michael Withers. A little bit slow moving up there, Leeds. And you can see there that it's taking its toll, and Vinacolo is getting through a lot of work. They really should get the message out to him. Say, come on, fellas, we've got to make sure that this guy has a bit of a rest. We know he's explosive when he runs from the dummy half position, but someone else has to take that responsibility. Give him chance to recover. Here is Fielding again. Barry McDermott just turned his back then, left it to McKenna and Ryan Bailey. And Deacon finds Yistin Harris, who led Leeds in the 1998 Grand Final against Wigan, which they lost, of course. And Harris, nowhere to go. Reardon waits. Finds Paul Deacon, last tackle, there's the kick. And it's a high one, looking for Vinacolo again out there. Ball is palmed back inside, Vinacolo has it. Gets the ball away, brilliantly picked up. Dumped back, if they spread it, they must be in. Vinacolo, Shantan Harpe! Shantan Harpe! Referee hasn't given it. It's the video referee. The tackle was complete. He wants when to he see if that tackle is complete. First time tonight for the video referee. I don't think he'll give this, Eddie. I think that the man was tackled when he offloaded on his back. That's fine, it certainly comes off Walker as far as I'm concerned. Great offload there, no I've, knock on. That's OK, but that's it there. I honestly feel that the tackle has been completed and this will be no try. Well, is the ball carrying arm on the deck when the tackle is affected here on Radford? Yeah, but it's surely if he's been stopped. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the knock-on. There is no knock-on. It was a great take, but this is what he's got to look at. And I think the tackle has been completed. Well, Sean McRae is watching this. What would you give, Sean? I've got a few of these wrong before. I'd give no try. I'd give no try on it. I think he's been tackled. I agree with Steve. Tackle's been complete. Well, the cards are up around the stadium for a try from the Bradford fans. It's no try. Penalty kick to the defence. Leeds breathe a sigh of relief. And it is no try. 
Well, he's got it right, the video referee. And rightly so there. It was just brushing, wasn't it? As it hit the ground, as he offloaded it. Maguire then to poaching for Leeds. They maintain their slender advantage in the grand final, eight points to four. And McDermott and Fielden was looking for him then. Pratt got him. And so did 29 Stuart Fielden. Much has been made of the Vinicolo Maguire battle for top try scorer after all is said and done. But there is that other little cameo tonight that's unfolding here. Fielden and McDermott. There's Danny Maguire in at dummy half for Leeds. Now it's with Sinfield. And Sinfield drifts the kick behind Vinacolo. Calderwood's after this, but Vinacolo does so well there. Great defence from the leading try scorer in the game so far this year. Phil Clark. It's no surprise, is it, to people who follow the Leeds Rhinos this season, just how quick Mark Calderwood is. They've tried it once or twice, they've won goal line dropouts. I've got a feeling eventually Mark Calderwood's going to come up with a massive play here today. The accuracy of the Leeds kicks has been superb. His enthusiasm always matches that. And uh, they've just got themselves, just got to give a chance to uh, just to wait to do it. But at the moment, Bradford coming back, the more familiar runs from dummy half on the outside backs, and they're starting to make the metres that they made in the last time they played against them when they obviously went on to win. Harris with the kick, but it's not the best. It's straight into Marcus Pai. Whoa, what a run from Marcus Pai, right over the top of Deacon. Good job that the reinforcements were there. Well, all the pundits this week were saying both Bradford and Leeds, the two places they will not be kicking to. Bradford wouldn't be kicking to Marcus By, they have. Leeds wouldn't be kicking to Vinacolo, they have. Well, who'd be a pundit, eh? Talk about tactics from both coaches. This is McKenna for the Leeds Rhinos. Just ahead in the grand final as we approach the half hour mark. Maguire, Sinfield, Chef Walker. Interesting to see as well the way that uh, Leeds and their coach Tony Smith. Burrows man, on, by the way. The man who was uh, who just passed the ball there, you know, and he, Danny Maguire is offside. No, no, he, oh, he took it in, he sorry. It in the in goal area. Thought the referee, Steve Ganton. Yeah. Danny Maguire, they've just used him very, very sparingly. They haven't made him take it on the defence. They don't want the Bradford side to get to him, maybe just rough him up. They've just kept him quiet. They will wait their time with Leeds. Then he will explode. He'll probably run from dummy half as well. Peacock, what a great run. Great burst from Jamie Peacock, all down by Mathers. And also Danny Maguire, quick play the ball from Bradford. It's now with Yeston Harris, Johnson. Oh, great tackle. Fantastic tackle that from Keith Senior. This is Harris, flicks the ball in field to Deacon. Here come Bradford again with Lee Radford. And Radford tackled by little Rob Burrow. Drilled to the ground, 10 metres away. It's with Paul Deacon. And Deacon stabs the kick in. Job for Mathers to do, and he does it confidently, efficiently and confidently. He's done it all season, hasn't he? The positional sense has been superb from Richie Mathers. This could be the key substitution. I expected Tony Smith to do this for the last ten, and that's interference at the play of the ball. Rob Parker, the culprit. Lack of discipline. So, so important that you just keep your mind on the job. The game plan has not to be taken away. And it's the pressure. Listen to this crowd. Yes, the South Stand has been transferred over the Pennines, as has the Oxford Stadium for this tonight. It's the first All-Yorkshire Grand Final. The top two in the Super League all year. Bradford, the defending champions. Oh, oh the ball's come out. It's got to be a penalty, two on one. And Yeston Harris doesn't agree. Well, he can disagree all he wants. The official Steve Ganson has got it absolutely spot on. There it is. Fielding just got to him at the same time. Remember, the official does not have the advantage of the slow-mo replay. We do. Not happy. Brian Noble. 
Well, they were very relaxed, the two coaches in our studio last night for the preview programme, but uh, the adrenaline is pumping now. It certainly is. Relaxed. I thought Tony Smith was going to fall asleep. He still looks all right, doesn't he? Looks very cool and calm. Yeah, he's still got that uh, cardboard cut-out look about him, hasn't he? <laughs> well, he was saying, wasn't he, last night, that... All his work has been done over the eight months preceding this. It's uh, now all down to the players. And there is his captain, Kevin Sinfield. And Sinfield is playing, as I say, his 200th career game. Standoff against the Bulls in the Cup final last year, by the way, when he uh, spurned at the opportunity of a, a penalty kick at goal. Controversial because he's lost by two points, but he's brought his kicking boots tonight. It's ironic, Eddie, you mentioned that particular day at Cardiff when they could have uh, evened the scores up. They went for the quick tap instead, but it has been noted throughout the week. Tony Smith made it quite clear every opportunity that Leeds had for the two points, they would be taking them. 10 4 to Leeds. Leeds supporters will remember and they won't want me to remind them and in 1998 they lost by that very scoreline to the Wigan Warriors in the inaugural grand final. Burrow was underneath the kickoff, and here now is Chris McKenna. Some more injury news from Bill. It's another problem for the Bulls, Eddie. Uh, Joe Vangen is still off the field, still having treatment on that right shoulder. And meanwhile, Michael Withers has been having running repairs. During that last video referee decision, he was actually off the pitch asking for treatment. During that uh, penalty from Kevin Sinfield, he had more treatment in back play. He's just limping slightly, and that is another consideration for the Bulls. They really don't need Withers, such a key performer, full, them at, uh, full back, carrying a problem now. And on top of that, Bill, is that Stuart Fielden was down in back play. He looks shaky. He the... got a kick in the face, I think, Steve, in the tackle up there. But Withers is certainly in trouble. You could see that there. Come on, work. Well, that's a major problem for Bradford. Well, I think the Bulls will be quite happy there. You can see the fullback is in all sorts of pain. I think Brian Noel will be quite happy to get the message out, say, come on, let's just keep it this way. Up to half time, we'll rejig everything. There is a very good replacement for Michael Withers out there on the field at the moment. Number 17, Stuart Reardon, who operated at fullback in last year's grand, grand final and got the Harry Sunderland award as man of the match. Deacon with the kick through, looking for Vinacolo Mathers. He just did the, the right all over the line. Did the right thing. When in doubt, kick it out, especially when this fella's just steaming down towards you. Well, I'd love to have a stat as to how many metres the big fella, Leslie Vinicolo, has had to get over this ground throughout this first half. Well, he has been busy, and uh, Sean, despite the fact that it's a 10-4 scoreline, it is poised on a knife edge, this. It sure is. It's been a fantastic game of rugby league. This is one of the last chances, of course, for... Uh, for Bradford to score before half time, and uh, you'd, you'd, you'd back them in this field position, certainly. Um, I think the score line at the moment is a fair reflection of what's been going on out there. It's been uh, it's been difficult getting out of your own half. Uh, if you've uh, got a penalty, that was a bonus. Otherwise, uh, you've had to kick well, and uh, both sides have done it very effectively so far. Bradford is applying the pressure here with Carl Pratt, and he finds Harris, and Harris is clobbered by one, two, three Leeds Rhinos defenders. A little, bit more, gone. a little bit more running from dummy half. Bradford have to do it. They really haven't tested Leeds first and second markers. Leeds have done it. That is back to six. It is. The referee does not agree. It's the last tackle. The last tackle here for Bradford. And Pratt to the corner. And too deep. Well, I can't believe that. It was... Clear as mustard. That was a knock-on there by McKenna. Definitely touched it. The ball was being propelled backwards. And how on earth Ganson did not see that or his assistants, the touch judges, is beyond belief. Danny Ward for Leeds. McDermott 
And Maguire, he saw the gap, he was very nearly through. Important tackle then by Logan Swan. Burrow. This is McKenna. Burrow again. Organising a dummy half, finds Maguire. High kick. Early again in the tackle camp. Poaching and Senior got in each other's way. With the last one, that's a turnover. And again, the high kicks, both sides utilising that. You can see that Poaching couldn't take it cleanly. Now they will Bradford just slow it down. I think they might. And make sure it's a good kick and chase. Just getting to half time. Land Noble has to fine tune a few things. And this is one of them. They can't expect this big fella to keep coming up time and time again. I know that probably has been the game plan. But he must be out on his feet already. Radford dumped to the ground, 10 metres inside the Leeds half. Deacon with the kick down the line and Vinacolo not there. He'll be happy with that. He knows how important it is that the seconds are ticking away. Don't put under much pressure. The Leeds were quite happy to allow him to get that kick away. And the six-point lead as they go into the sheds will be very nice indeed for the Leeds coach Tony Smith. And Chef Walker. Half piece, stood his ground, helped out by Harris. Burrow, Marcus Bai, Langley with the first tackle and the effective one in the end. Looking for a penalty, Marcus Bai, none there. Maguire poaching, finds Sinfield. Oh, and there was a gap for Sinfield, he just lost his footing there. Senior weights. Safety first from the Rhinos. It's been a good, solid effort. Burrow will kick down that line again, and Vinacolo once more for the umpteenth time in this first half. Picks up and has to take the tackle. Well, a big problem there, and he knows it, is Vinacolo, that normally in that position, Michael Withers would have been back there to take it and take the responsibility off him. But Withers is not right, and he had to take the tackle. Here is Johnson. Fourth grand final in seven seasons for Johnson, but his first for the Bradford Balls as we approach half time. There's the half time siren, and it's uh, half of the job done by the Leeds Rhinos and Tony Smith. He's making his way to the dressing rooms, as is Brian Noble, his opposite number, and Leeds now leave the field together. I think it's safe to say that Bradford have to score pretty early. We have seen Leeds just dismantle the opposition once they get 10, 12, 16 points in front. Here we go then, second half, the last 40 minutes of the domestic season. Leeds ahead of the champions. Six points, that's all it is though. One converted try. And we saw in the grand final of last year, Bradford really did kick on and win the title in the second half. We have news of Michael with us right at the start. Bill. Yeah, we saw him struggling towards the end of that first half, and certainly there's a problem for Michael Withers. It's a, a thigh problem by the sound of things, and he's not to be able to come back out for the balls this evening. Joe Vangener, who is still off, but apparently is recovering from that shoulder problem. He got a hip in his shoulder, caused a, a lot of pain, but he should be able to come back for the balls. Tony Smith, the Rhinos coach, very happy with that first 40 minutes, as you'd imagine. One or two blemishes, he said, but otherwise they're doing everything right. Yes, they are doing everything right so far, but uh, the margin of victory is not big enough yet. It is a, a nervous opening couple of minutes of this second half for both sets of players and certainly both sets of supporters as poaching carries the battle forward for the Leeds Rhinos once again. They beat Leeds two weeks ago, Bradford. This is only the 
second game inside a month then. I wonder whether people will say if Bradford lose this that they've come into the grand final underdone. Not so for Leeds, of course, they had that wonderful win against Wigan only last Saturday. I'm just wondering Eddie, when Bradford will start changing their tactics now. Remember a fortnight ago when they ripped Leeds apart at Headingley. Bailey's kick high, and again, something for Vinacolo to deal with. And he deals with it competently, Vinacolo! Talk about energy on this fella there. Here's a fullback, Michael with us. with the penalty. There's little doubt that he's out for the rest of this game. Michael Withers, but what a great break from this fellow, Leslie Vinacolo. Calderwood giving away a silly penalty. It's cheap metres for Bradford then. Well, I mentioned composure, but getting back to those tactics... Leeds that's offside an... now. Surely they'll kick even further into the corner. Bradford, they stun Leeds with keeping the ball alive, getting it out wide. We haven't seen that yet. And they are going to kick into the corner. Will they do the link? There's Van Gennard waiting to come back on. They're 20 metres away. And here is Deacon. And he gives it width and finds Harris. Oh, that's a wasted pass by Yestin Harris. It was a good job that Carl Pratt was there. That could have been another penalty because he was tackled, wanted to get on and play the ball, and, Sinfi and uh, Danny Maguire tackled him again. This now is Langley. Marcus Bay all over the top of him. Johnson waits at dummy half. It's a Yestin Harris now. Now Stuart Fielden to carry the battle up front for Bradford. Robbie Paul restored to the side, started the second half. Great ball off the deck by Logan Swan. Bradford wondering where to go. Gives it with to Parker. And Parker, sliding defence from Leeds, though, deals with him. Great work there by Danny Maguire. You can see him come and then make sure that they couldn't offload. Paul Johnson for Bradford. Oh, big hit by Danny Ward. Robbie Paul waits again, it's with Yestin Harris, now Deacon, and Deacon finds Logan Swan, he finds Harvey! First try, second half, the balls, grab the ball, strike first. Has he lost it? Harvey. Oh, I thought he may have lost it, Eddie. But it was in a good position, Steve Ganson. They are not going to lie down this mob, the Bradford Bulls, and put that down to ill-discipline from Leeds. Calderwood gave the penalty. Second attempt of Vina Carlo. Then they were caught offside. Then from that position. I said, when are they going to start pulling it out wide? And it's that man again, Shantane Harpy. He ripped Leeds apart with two tries in seven minutes a fortnight ago. And Swan feeds the centre. It's game on. Withers looks up at the monitor in the dressing room and knows that his team have scored the first try of the second half of the grand final. And it came by Shontane Harpy. The 23-year-old. Eight tries in his last four matches coming into this. Deacon to add the extras. It just strips away from the post at the last moment. 8-10. Extra time, extra time. Oh, there's plenty of time to go ahead before <laughs> this big crowd here. At well, no one would it. complain. Oh, certainly not, apart from the players, perhaps. And the coaches, they said they'd leave the stadium and let someone ring them and let them know who's won when we had them on the briefing programme last night. Certainly would, and Leslie Vinicolo, they've given him yet again more work at the start of this second half. He'll be looking for a taxi to take him back home, but don't give me another 20, please. Fielden for Bradford. They have the tails up now, the champions. Robbie Paul, Rob Parker. Oh, ball comes free from Parker, and then a knock on by Kevin Sinfield. They'll play the first one. Big hit by McKenna. Certainly was, and why he tried to offload there, I'm not right sure. Tony Smith looking pretty smug. Good position now, will they work a strong move? Burrow gives it to Sinfield, and here is the big man on the angled run. It's Keith Senior. Burrow again, Willie Poaching attacking down the left-hand side. Langley wrestles him to the ground. Roughly and heavily, Sinfield, Danny Wall. 
Back it comes to Maguire, little juggle from Danny Ward, not really lit up Old Trafford yet. Danny Maguire. I think they're saving him, Eddie. I think they've come to life in the final quarter when they need it. Ryan Bailey. Diskin waits. Diskin slides the kick in, it's bounced and Ward was hunting it. And it's a goal line dropout. Bradford hadn't got to it first. Great work from Stuart Reardon, he's had to go into the full-back position. No stranger to that, of course. Man of the match here last year. Peacock coming back on. Good second set of six, though, that uh, the Rhinos have forced. Not a bad dropout, either. Jamie Jones Buchanan for the Rhinos. Forced back to the 40-metre line. Sinfield, the man at dummy half. Trying to go inside Langley, and Langley gets to him. Maguire again. Here is Ward. Roughly bangs off Robbie Ball, but can't get away from Parker. Maguire will go down the short side, finds Senior. Johnson all over the top of him. Poaching again. Maguire. Here's Rob Burrow. Burrow to Diskin. And Diskin examining that. Bradford defence again. Surely a little kick into the in goal. It's with poaching, they're on the last. And it's with Bai, and he just couldn't get through. That's the turnover. Well, they went for the power play. Justin Harris, all the experience, trying to melt the penalty. Steve Ganson says, get on with it. Harris again. Look at that one-line defence. That's been impressive, you know, from Leeds. Let's have a word with Adrian Morley down there with Phil and Bill on the sideline. Adrian, it's a rip-roaring second half now. That's right, it was uh, <coughs> really important that the, the Bradford Bulls scored the first try to, to keep themselves in the game. They've done that, so, you know, it could go uh, it could go anyway now. It could, I mean, extra time, what do you think? I mean, it'd be great for, uh, from a spectator's point of view, but uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the coaches, they'll have uh, a few problems with their fingernails, but uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to, uh, great to see. It would be great to see for all of us, but... <laughs> The players, could they cope with the extra time? And, of course, when you think about it, Steve-O, the Aussies and the Kiwis coming into the Tri-Nations to face Great Britain on the back of two test matches against each other. Actually, the extra time mightn't do Great Britain's heart chances any harm. Yeah, but they could also pick up an injury, Eddie, because, uh, you know, when you're really pushing your body to the limit... Oh, Bailey, this is a good run. Good kick and chase now, that's all it needs from Leeds, got to control it. And here is Calderwood, oh, he's lost the ball forward to see Sinfield to knock off. Just trying to be a little bit too clever. That has been one failing of this Leeds outfit. It has been tremendous rugby league football they've produced this year. But in pressure games, we even saw it against Wigan fortnight ago, uh, last week, should I say, when they took Wigan apart, and then all of a sudden, they got cocky, they started offloading, and then Wigan came up with two intercepts. And they brought them back into the game, when all they need is that little kicking game just to keep turning Bradford around. And they've done that to near perfection of Leeds tonight. Deacon feeds the scrum, ball comes out to Yeston Harris. This is his 13th appearance for the Bradford Bulls, unlucky for some. Johnson. Now a TT to him with poaching. Robbie Paul. Peacock will drive it forward as he always does. Robbie Paul waits. Paul Deacon. Langley on the run. Interesting to see how Justin Harris is getting more involved in this game. Robbie Paul. Good run from him, and he finds the man wide out there, which is Johnson, who gives it to Carl Pratt. Good tackle by Burrow, it had to be as well. Good play by Pratt. He's had a shift out to the wing. Last nice tackle, by the way, here, Deacon. They're running it with Logan Swan. A stab down the line, looking for Harpy again. It came back off the Knock heels on. of Vinacolo. Knock on from Oh, I Vinicolo. think that came off the heel of Vinacolo. Well, I think he got a little touch to it, Eddie. By the way, the official has uh, called for the knock-on. Little kick through. Well, well, a very it. confident call from Steve Ganson. It certainly was. Okay. 
Yeah, just a little fingernail, I feel. Well, they know all about little fingernails, and they, he did make a play for the ball. Yeah. They know all about that business in the grand final, the Bradford Bulls. Well, Michael Withers in the dressing room will be thinking that over and over again now. Bradford trying to keep the pressure on this lead side as Bailey tries to work it forward to the halfway line. Plays the ball to Mathers. Here now, Maguire. Is this the moment for Maguire to explode onto the scene? No, Parker with the tackle on the last, but only just over halfway. Here's the kick from Sinfield. Just a dab. No. But it turns around Stuart Reardon. And Reardon picks it up in his own in goal. Interesting that he didn't want to let the ball run dead and rely on a tap on the 20. Yeah, it was a big decision there. Stuart Reardon, I thought maybe could have been better served, but see the done well just keeping this guy quiet, haven't they? Okay, Manicolo open with the first try of the game. Harpy. Oh, that's good play. Here's Vinicolo again. Straight at Lauatiti. Great offload to Logan Swan, who loses the ball. Well, they won't be liking that at all. Logan Swan says that it was uh, stolen. I'm not so sure. And Michael Willis has changed. He will not be playing any further part in the grand final. A winter of rehabilitation for Michael Withers. There is just under half an hour of the grand final to go for his colleagues. And I suppose in many ways Brian Noel will be happy at least that he can rejig the team. Well, Pratt on the okay. right wing and of course Stuart Reardon. Burrow from the back of the scrub. Back into the full-back position, but... Uh, Leeds look the more composed at the moment. They're, they're playing well as a unit. They don't look as though they're frustrated. Poaching. Maguire. Lao Titi. They're trying to stop the big man offloading the ball. Diskin. Sinfield. Straightens the run up. Thought about the pass, took them on. Diskin. Maguire. Long ball. Poaching. They have the man on the overlap wide. And trapped in goal is Carl Pratt. Great chase, great kick. Leeds have just upped it a bit, Phil. Yeah, they're showing the patience that you need to win the big games, aren't they? They don't need to score on every player. They're just building pressure on this Bradford side. And, you know, an interesting fact, we get a great atmosphere here at the Theatre of Dreams. But we also get a very slippery surface. We tend to see more players than ever falling over and trying to be in the defensive line. And uh, the speedsters in the lead side, well, that might just, uh, just favour them. Fourth goal line drop out of the match for Bradford to halfway and Burrow. Gives it to Jamie Jones Buchanan. Good run from him, 15 metres before he's halted. Maguire again. And Bailey. Well, they reverted to type on the leads. This full house is holding its breath, waiting for the, the next flash of inspiration from somebody. Oh, that wasn't the best idea. You can see that Walker was coming back on the inside. What he would have been better served to have run out wide. Logan Swan goes to the bench. Walker with the mistake for Leeds. Just decided to step back on the inside when would have been served better there. Sean Harpy right in front of him. St Helens, you know, the only team to reverse a defeat in the qualifying final with victory in the grand final and both against the Bulls 1999 and 2002. That's what Leeds are trying to do here tonight. They're hanging on by their fingernails at the moment. Just the two points in it. You get the feeling this match can go either way. That was the, the talk around the ground before the match. Nobody really dared to pick a winner. And who's going to come home with a wet sail in the, the last 20 minutes or so? Robbie Paul, good run. Oh, good ball too. A lot more adventure now from Bradford. They realise it. Last tackle, Deacon. Have to get the kick in. It's a high one. They're all after this. Mathers can hear them coming. Whoa! What a take. What a take from Richie Mathers. Fielding Vinicolo smothering him at all time. Trying to keep him upright, trying to get through water take. They must have been able to hear Vinicolo and Fielden coming at him. 
He just concentrated on it. Walker says, surely that must have been a penalty. It was a high shot. Here's Rob Burrow. No doubt in my mind, Tony Smith has got that message out. I don't want anything silly. If he can't make sure of the pass... Great ball, Maguire, wide. And he finds Mathers. Poaching. Maguire again. And Calderwood asks for the kick to go in that position, and there it is. It's going to be another set of six. Harris doing well. Another drop out underneath the sticks. The pressure is building on Bradford. Perfect tactics by the Rhinos, and they know it too. It's only a two-point lead, but psychologically, they know they're around. Harris to the rescue. He read it superbly. But what a lovely little chip kick through from Sinfield. They're happy at the moment, but they know they're going into the final quarter very, very soon. Bradford ahead, two tries to one, but leads ahead on the scoreboard. And the fifth goal line dropout that Bradford have had to put in. And can they stand firm under all this pressure? Jamie Jones Buchanan. Diskin waits. Finds Rob Burrow. Flips it back to Lauatiti. Tries to offload to Maguire. Knock on. Well, that is what I was talking about, and I cannot believe that that. And he's patting the ball away. And he's actually given away the penalty here, Maguire, because he's had a bit of a go at the referee, Steve Ganson. So is this fella <laughs> as well, but... <laughs> well, I, I've just praised Leeds. Okay. For slowing things down, not doing anything silly. We know the ability of Alela Titi. We know he's one of the best offloaders in the world. But at times like this, you don't need it. Fielding. They had the balls well and truly on the rack. The short kicking game was forcing him back. Two dropouts on the trot. Peacock here for Bradford. Joe Vanganar, you might have noticed, number eight, has returned. The New Zealand international for the Bradford Bulls. Here is Yestin Harris. Maguire and Lauatiti bring him down. Here is Radford now. What heartache would it be if Yestin Harris could turn it around? Oh, he's given the knock on. Thought he was going to give the penalty there to... Well, he's given the penalty now to Leeds for descent. Big call by Steve Ganson. Radford, he wanted to get on with it. Well, that should have been a penalty. Sinfield had a second pull. That has got to be a penalty to Bradford, not the other way. Well, the penalty given for descent, as it was up the other end just a few moments ago by Mr. Ganson. Sinfield is off. And Ferner comes in to the fray. This is Jamie Jones Buchanan. Diskin. Here is Ferner. Great tackle. Well, we saw last week against Wigan that Tony Smith after a couple of silly offloads that Leeds gave intercepts away and silly silly action, he threw Ferner out there and said, steady the ship. He did it last week, can I do it again? Here's Maguire, a dab through, but not the best. Straight to Deacon. Deacon gives it to Reardon. Poor effort. That isn't from Maguire, though. Maguire looking to wrestle Reardon over the try line and force oh, another goal been, line dropout. Could have been penalised there, didn't Maguire? He never got back anywhere near the 10 metres, and he certainly wasn't standing square to the play of the ball. Here's Leslie Vinicolo again. And have, this defence from Leeds is getting their supporters on their feet here. It's superb. Nothing in this grand final. Harris, wide. Carl Pratt spins away from two. Can't get away from Lauatiti. Last tackle. No metres gained really by Bradford, but that's a good kick. It'll allow the Bulls to chase and hound Mathers down. And they do. Oh, the Bulls come free. It's got to be a knock on then. He's lost it. Knock on. on. It is. Well, Richie Mathers 
He's so mad with himself. Paul Johnson involved in the tackle. Getting excited. And why not? This really is all pressure. That was a call from the touch judge. It was a big hit, wasn't it? Vanganar and Johnson. Well, Johnson's pulling him away, and that... Well, that's evened it up, Eddie, because that really should have been a penalty to Leeds. I think the pressure's getting to Mr Ganson at the moment. Robbie Paul, Jamie Peacock. Oh, high swing. It was from McGuire. Danny McGuire right into the mush of Peacock. Paul wide. This is Deacon. Robbie Paul directing operations at dummy half. He finds Big Joe Vanganar. Vanganar goes through one, flicks the pass away. It's Reardon. Reardon one-handed. Reardon attacking the left-hand side. Good tackle by Rob Burrow. Harpy. Harpy to Harris. Harris to Vanganar. Bump, bang. Still stands. Vanganar! Vanganar still! What an effort from Vanganar! What an effort from the five lead Rhinos to keep him out. Last tackle. Spin it wide, Bradford. Which they do. But Carl Pratt, he wanted it in the corner, he said. And I bet Brian Noble felt exactly the same. They just could not get this man down. Vangana, and remember, he had a bad shoulder injury early in the first half. Didn't show it there. Here's Lawatiti. It'll be lock-up time now, just runs from dummy half. They've got it right. Senior, oh, is offload. To Ferner. Ferner won't. He'll play the ball nice and steady. Get himself into a good position for a good kick. Diskin to Bailey. Bailey bounces off. Deacon but can't get away from those two. Pretty high for... In Charles the corner. Brown. In the corner, he said. Oh, oh that that's a knock-on. Behind Calderwood. And they got away with it. Good defence from Shantane Harpy on the last. Diskin. Maguire with the kick. To try and turn them around. It's a good one, too. Pratt picks it up, though, ten metres away from his own line. Carl Pratt wants of leads, loses his footing under the challenge of Danny Maguire. Sean McRae, pick as a winner, will you? I don't think I can. Um, it's a great arm wrestle at the moment. We've got the, the ball going from one end to the other. A uh, couple of errors starting to creep in. It's, uh, we're probably getting into that fatigue factor time. 16 minutes left on the clock. Players starting to tire. We'll get some mis mistakes made because of it. poor decisions. Well, come on. That'll, that'll put pressure on. Like, like we've just seen there, that's going to put pressure on the uh, on the side that makes the error. And if the other side can capitalise, well, they've probably got the greatest chance of winning the game. There's a power there. Well, I don't know where he got a knock on from there. Well, it certainly go went forward. I think frustrated is Brian Noble. So Everyone in the white jerseys were up. Their arms were up, protesting the decision. Anyway, Mr. Ganson's made it, and that's it. That's why Leeds are in possession here with Marcus Pai. Papua New Guinea International wearily gets to his feet, plays it to Diskin. Here's Rob Burrow. Finds Ferner on the charge. Good tackle by Robbie Paul. Diskin again. Do they look for one, Eddie? Not yet, I wouldn't say. Maguire, he's not a big fan of it. Tony Smith. That ball went back to Diskin. Diskin tries oh! to get the pass away. What on earth are they doing, Leeds, yet again? They want to commit suicide. Well, they want to win a grand final, Steve. I know they do, but there's one thing winning it and throwing it away, and that's exactly what Diskin's got. He's had a brilliant game as Diskin up until that point. We saw Carl Pratt shouting, you should be kicking into the in-goal area. Leeds should have done exactly the same thing. I think Joe Vanganar's grand final's over. He comes to the side as Bradford attack with Harris. It's getting to that point now where they know they've got to risk their arm, Bradford. And Deacon slides okay. the kick through. And Fielding's after Richie Mathers, but Mathers has the leg on him, does he? No. Vanganar's in agony with that shoulder. Walker. I'm not surprised with that amazing effort, just two metres away from the post. 14 minutes to go. Two points, the difference. Well, 
It is nervous times now. Bye. Fielden makes the tackle on the halfway line. Bike lays it to Burrow. Here is Sinfi. Little dance. That's the last one. This is where the captaincy comes into play. Keeping you cool and making sure you get the right message out. It's a high one. Great kick. Great kick, but well claimed by Vinacolo uh, again. And Vinacolo, a human battering ram. But they all come in and in the end flattening four of them. What an effort from Vinacolo, Phil Clark. Certainly is, he's been outstanding for the Bradford Bulls. I think Reardon's also playing an instru instrumental uh, effort really for them in this second half of getting more and more involved. And, uh, you know, opportunity knocks very quietly in the grand final. Both of these sides need to be very attentive for when the opportunity arises. This could be the chance here in Hercules. Mistake from Bradford to go into the diamond. If they can score next, they can win this game, but they need to be patient for the chance. Well, he just headed that ball there. And there's quite a few players just having a few words to each other. They know the enormity of it and uh, just to ban them the standing. Come on. No just fatigue, one, the fatigue factor maybe, Steve. Well, no one just calling. As I said, this is where a captain earns his trust. Oh, not oh. the best pass from Ferner to Shep Walker, though. Well, both sides are trying their best to throw away the trophy. Here's Jamie Jones Buchanan, up the middle he goes. Second, come on, give it on, come on. Burrow, Sinfield, McKenna. Phil Clark made the point about the greasy surface at Old Trafford. Burrow, Laotite, gets the pass away. Marcus Pai! Great tackle, great tackle over on that far side was by Jamie Peacock. Jamie Peacock might just have saved the grand final for Bradford there. Great work by Leeds, quick hands as well. But as Eddie has mentioned, the second rower, how on earth did he get back there? Now Leeds cannot just let their guard down. They've got to make sure that this one line of defence, which has been very good throughout this game, no one has to go up all on his own, you've got to go as a unit. That's what Tony Smith will be sending out. No glories. Peacock. It's a team effort. No goal for intercept. If ever there's a time for a 40-20, though, for Paul Deacon, this is it. He can't get the pass away even, never mind the kick. And again, we saw that composure of the defence. Not being sucked into it, Eddie. Harris, he can kick a 40-20 as well, but... Oh, that's right into Barkas by arms. Oh, what a collision after nearly 70 minutes of a grand final. Good refereeing by Steve Ganson there. Johnson trying to milk it. Senior. Second! Mathers playing a more important part in this grand final, Richard Mathers. And more runs from dummy half. Here's Sinfield. Looks... Takes the tackle, wants to have a quick play of the ball, does Rob Burrow, scampering little run from Burrow, finds Maguire, Maguire chinking one way, gets the pass away, he's found Chris McKenna, oh, McKenna's dropped it. Now there wasn't an offside situation there. Carl Pratt was in front of the Bradford player, I think it was Logan Swan, certainly got a hand to it. We enter the last ten minutes of the 2004 Grand Final and there are just two points between these two sides. Here's Logan Swan, it's a nail-biter at Old Trafford. Robbie Paul. Bradford need to get up the other end if they can, get over halfway. Sean, they haven't been over halfway for a while. No, they haven't, and they're showing signs now of, uh, of having to play a little bit of catch-up. They'll know, they'll look at the clock and say 10 minutes, there's plenty of time left, but we are behind on the scoreboard. We have to score, even if it's a penalty goal, to square the game up. Leeds, they don't want to be guilty of looking at the scoreboard and looking at the clock. They want to make sure they play their sets of six the way they've been playing them. They've been much more conservative tonight. It's been a very tactical game by them just to try to complete possessions and get down the other end and put Bradford under pressure. Sean, I just feel that Kevin Sinfield has come of age in this grand final. He's led, by, he's led really well, Steve O'Hast, he's led by example, his kicking game's been good, and I think he's had a calming effect on a lot of players out there tonight. It's Keith Senior now, over halfway. 
Blackpool leads. And the Bradford fans just watching glumly here as Sinfield slides the kick through, looking for the speedster Calderwood. But well cleared up by Reardon. Good play by Calderwood as well. He just pushed by Nicolo out of the way. He said, I want to get to the tackle. And Calderwood that's with the tackle there on by Nicolo again. That's enthusiasm. And you could see there, by Nicolo could hardly get to his feet to play that football. The ploy, the ploy, left each. the ploy from Tony Smith to just pepper the big fella Vinicolo throughout this game has come up trumps. But he has stood the test so far, hasn't he? Must he be running low on fuel now, but here goes Deacon! Deacon is looking for support, he's on his own, he's on his own still. Now Vinicolo arrives, Walker with an important tackle. What a time for a clean break, there hasn't been many in this game. Last one here. Harris will hoist the kick. Marcus Bai's underneath this. Claims it, Marcus Bai, and he's away. He's got Danny McGuire with him in support. Marcus Bai takes the tackle. Common sense, didn't want to rush it. He knew he had McGuire outside. Here comes poaching. He'll slow things down. Bradford, they're struggling back to get into their 10. Those they're looking... Leeds fans are behind the post that Leeds are attacking. Looking very tired. This is Rob Burrow. This is the time where Maguire should run from dummy half. Test the defence. Well, he gives it instead to Sinfield. And Sinfield showed it to Jamie Jones. Buchanan has a bash himself. Harpy there, and also Radford. Now then, Chev Walker. Chev Walker trying to barge his way to the line, nearly lost it. Calderwood. Calderwood to Sinfield. Crossfield kick. They have numbers out wide, Leeds. It was a must take there, and that bounces off the Bradford legs of Harris. Is it a knock on by Leeds? Well, it certainly looked as though there was a, Yeah, it certainly looked as though Leeds just got a hand to it. Yeah, senior just dragged it behind. The one thing that's been amazing in this match, Steve, I know we've only had three tries. No video referees tonight. Nothing, just the one. That's right. Just the one. Nothing controversial yet. Well, Adrian Morley, let's get down to you. Oh, what we call without it. That's fatigue, Adrian, isn't it? That's yep. fatigue. Sorry, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's uh, just, just what the, uh, the Rhinos needed. Uh, they were just coming back, Bradford, I'm getting a bit worried there, but just what, uh, just what the Rhinos need. But that, that must be, he must be worn out, Robbie Paul, for that, mustn't he? Yeah, I think so. I mean, fatigue play, plays a big part in uh, these kind of games, and, you know, for the effort the guys are putting, who, who can blame him for dropping the ball? Here's David Ferner. David Ferner, his last game in this country, the Bradford fans. I think they know the writing's on the wall. Maguire, senior, back to Maguire. Danny Maguire for Leeds! The young hero to win the grand final. And Leeds may be the long wait is over. 38 tries this year, and Danny Maguire maybe has won it now for the Rhinos. And it all came about by that horrible mistake from the Bradford skipper, Robbie Paul, under no pressure whatsoever. He just lost control. The tired arms. And this man, who has had a superb season, his dream has come true, Danny Maguire, surely now, has taken away the trophy from the Bradford Bulls, dinking. It was a good offload, and it was a good step. Nothing that Radford could do about that, and it all came about from this. No pressure whatsoever he started it seen it did ever so well and he finished it look at the face of Danny Maguire as everyone who has got the Leeds colors in this wonderful stadium they know it has been a long long way Eddie 1972 and Robbie Paul knows that maybe if Sinfield kicks this goal, the trophy is going nine miles up the road to Headingley.
This to win it. Sinfield adds the extras. It's an eight-point gap. 16-8. And you can't surely see Bradford coming back now. It's going to be difficult for them. They had the opportunities on several occasions. Remember the beautiful clean break from Paul Deacon. They've gone for the short one. And he's it. Coming. Now then, driving downfield. Just go for the one point. That in itself will run down the clock. Nothing stupid. Make sure of a decent pass. Runs from dummy half. They know it. They can sniff it. They can look at the fingers and see that gold ring slipping on very, very nicely indeed. Ward will play the ball to Maguire. He is poaching. Leeds looking to finish in style. Tony Smith. The search for the grand final victory. The search for the championship for Leeds might just be over, courtesy of Danny Maguire and company. Well, it's Here they come again, Bradford. They won't give it up until the final siren. It's amazing, isn't it, the glory that Robbie Paul has had throughout his career, that it should come down to that just one little mistake. But as you say, they won't give in. Robbie Paul especially, he'll be wanting to get there into dummy half, perhaps. Maybe a chip over the top. The message has got out to Richie Mathers. Do not stand deep. Keep your eye on it. Never mind if Mathers has got to be turned around. It's got to be a little chip over. It's got to be something different. Muscle, strength and power will not just get through this Leeds defence. Here is Deacon. There's a little chip over the top looking for Shantain Harpy. Mathers, safe as houses and escapes the clutches. He's had a big game, hasn't he? So impressed with his positional play this year, Richie Mathers. He must be going pretty close to the man of the match as well. And this is the moment where Leeds know nothing stupid. This man has got all the experience in the world. David Fernand. I think Brian Noble knows. And David Ferner, by the way, ten years after winning the big one in Australia, wins another one here on the other side of the world, because there's no coming back for Bradford now. They will try and try, but even they can't score twice in a minute and ten. Leeds have won the grand final, they've won the championship for the first time in 32 years. And what celebrations there will be in Leeds tonight. Tony Smith in our programme that previewed this grand final last night, Steve-O. He talked about Manchester United. They waited over 25 years themselves before they won the title. And look what's happened to Man United since then, he said. Well, you never know, do you? It could repeat itself in rugby league. And what a tackle from David Ferner. Looked as though the big fella, Vinacola, was going to get through. And you've got to give... The coach, Tony Smith, so much praise, Eddie. The tactics he has produced tonight has been nothing short of sensational. They're keeping it alive, though, Bradford, right to the end, right to the bitter end. 15 seconds remaining, and then they will start the party. Robbie Paul, it goes wide, it's a knock-on! It's all over! could hope for in a grand final it was tough wasn't it a real tough game we had to be patient tonight something we probably uh, haven't done it a few times we've learned some lessons this year 
yeah, and that's what it's about, learning over the period of the season to be able to, you know, keep your composure and uh, come up with a good performance. Did we see another side of the Rhinos tonight, maybe? Yeah, oh, I think so, you know, we've tried to improve and, and uh, that's been our big area this year. We've done it pretty well. Um, you know, all credit to the opposition. Geez, uh, I thought Bradford were really good tonight. They've worked, worked really hard. It was a tough match. So tough, but were you worried at 10-8 you had those repeat sets on their line? You didn't have anything to show for it. Did it go through your mind maybe that we need something here? No, I had faith in these people from the start, you know. It, uh, I've been saying it all along. You know, it could have been wrong, but uh, you know, I just, you know, I know they were going to give everything tonight, and they and, and the smarts along with giving all their effort. You know, so no, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doubting them. I was, I was hoping them over, but no, I wasn't doubting them. You came to the Rhinos, Tony, to do a job. Job accomplished. Yes, yeah, been, been good fun. Well, I really enjoyed it. You know, I think everybody's enjoyed it. It's been a great year. I'm really, really pleased for the for the players, they've had a lot of criticism this year and pressure and uh, those people up there, they've been yelling out for it for a long time. They're great. They're enjoying it. Thanks, Tony. Well done. Thank you. And he will have a good night as well, Tony Smith. Mission accomplished, absolutely right. He was brought to Leeds to polish the diamond, add the finishing touches. And he has. And uh, Brian Noble, well, he now moves on to even bigger things. He has to try and win the Tri-Nations for Great Britain. But the Leeds Rhino supporters, they have waited years and years and years for this. Uh, probably players, and there are other supporters on the terraces who can't obviously remember the last time that Leeds picked up the championship, it's that long ago. But there's the trophy, all decked out now in the yellow and blue. And there's the match-winning try scorer, Danny Maguire, with Bill. Danny, it came for the Rhinos in the end. Did you think it wasn't going to come, that deciding try? Um, I don't know, really. It was just it was so, so much hard work out there. It was an end-to-end -end game, and the ball, I don't think the ball was out of play hardly any, any time in the game. And, you know, it was a great effort from all the boys, and you know, we just chucked a bit, and we're going to celebrate tonight. You had all those repeat sets. You didn't have anything to show for it. They started to come back at you. That must be a worrying phase of the game. Yeah, they're a good side of Bradford. Um, we know we kept turning around the tyre, but you know we, we didn't take the opportunities up until the last minute. But you know, no matter how we've won them, um, just a bit. And what a great season it has been. I mean, you've got the league leaders' shield, nine points clear. This puts the icing on the cake, doesn't it? Well, it tops it all off. Um, I don't know how many months we've been slogging at it. Um, Pre-season training, probably nearly on a year now, and all this is this is what it's, this is what it's for really. And, I can't believe it, just a bit. Well done, Danny. Cheers. Well done, Danny Maguire. Well done, David Perner, Chris McKenna, and all the Leeds Rhinos players. And look at that. That's what this game is all about. Great rivalry, but also great friendship. And the rain absolutely hosing down on Old Trafford now, but nothing will dampen the spirits for Leeds. But it is despair for the Bradford Bulls. I think they knew, Eddie, that they had been outplayed. We saw a different Leeds tonight. All the talk all throughout this season was their ability to offload in tight situations. And OK, had a little bit of a wobble just after the restart when Shantane Harpy went in for a try. It looked as though that the Bulls were coming in to take control and the despair on the face of Robbie Paul Remember, it was Robbie Paul's knock-on, which there wasn't a Leeds player within four or five metres. Oh, Matt Adamson and David Ferner, big buddies, of course. They will be heading back to Australia together after this. And D Dave Ferner's with Bill. That, that sums it up, doesn't it? I mean, you and Matt part company with the club tonight. For you, it's putting the, the, the perfect finish to career. Yeah, you know, it was a funny sort of build-up because I still hadn't sunk in, it was my last game. I had a good, you know, good opportunity to play. I actually injured the knee at the, uh, in the warm-up a bit. So, um, you know, the medical staff sort of got me right. Um, played a bit of the first up in the team, but I just think it was just credit to our team all year. And I think, mate, you know, it was a great game by the Bulls. Uh, I haven't had much luck against them, uh, against them since I've been over here, but, mate, it's fantastic. And what a way to bow out. I mean, you could not wish for a better way to end your career. No, you can't. I think, you know, it was in the back of the mind. First, we had to get into the grand final, but just to have an opportunity to play in the game. 
for me, I just wanted to play as well as I can. Um, it's just a great way to be out, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, it's hard to write that, but it's, it's fantastic I've had the opportunity, mate. I had my me, uh, me mother come all, all the way over, uh, my family, uh, family back home, and just, uh, it's a great way to finish. Well done, enjoy the rest. Thanks, for all. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Yeah, he goes out on a high, David Ferner. Been a great, great servant to the game. First to Wigan here and latterly to the Leeds Rhinos. And yes, they will believe that it's Leeds now. They are the champions of 2004. And Matt Diskin, by the sound of things, has won the Man of the Match award. Only the second hooker to pick up the... Harry Sunderland trophy and Sean McRae very well deserved. He had a big part to play in the win. Oh, he had a big influence on the team, getting them going forward. His work out of dummy half was outstanding. Thought he defended very well tonight. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't argue with the fact that he's got man of the match. Well, the referee and his touch judges are on their way now to receive their commemorative medals. Uh, they will not be cheered by anyone in this ground, but I think uh, Phil Clark, Steve Ganson. He had a great game. He uh, proved he is the referee of the year. Uh, he's been voted the referee of the year. He did have a good game, but I think he, uh, he obviously helped the situation. But the 34 players out there who played, I think really they're the ones who did deserve the applause. I thought that Leeds really their performance to uh, to win that game in the last 20 minutes was a real classic show of, of patience and field position. They made the ball available to Bradford only near the Bradford line. They said, look, if you're going to score against us, you're going to have to go 80 or 90 metres if you want to do it. Bradford were unable to do that due to the superiority of the Leeds defence and, uh, and they thoroughly deserve their win. Superb effort from them. Absolutely magnificent from Leeds and Liam Botham there is part and parcel of the celebrations. But up come the Bradford Bulls for their losers' medals. They were up those steps last year for the winners' rings. Paul Deacon is absolutely inconsolable. Great effort from them, Steve-O, to come from behind, get second, get here to Old Trafford, but just didn't quite have it in the end. No, I think when they went over to half-time, they knew that uh, Joe Van Gennar wasn't 100%. We all already knew that Michael Withers was not returning. And it is a bitter blow, but they have played their part. It was a wonderful grand final. It really was a big arm wrestle. And you have to feel sorry for Robbie Paul. His error will be looked at and analysed for years and years to come. But here come the Rhinos. Not one of their supporters has left the stadium because they have waited 32 years for a moment like this. And up they come. They all will accept their winner's rings. And the last act will be to hand over that trophy to Kevin Sinfield, who must have gone close to Matt Diskin as man of the match. Danny Maguire's try, Richie Mathers, great display at fullback. And Kevin Sinfield becomes the fourth Leeds captain to captain a championship winning side, following in the footsteps of the great Lewis Jones in 1961, Barry Seaborn in 1969, and Alan Hardesty in 1972. And Tony Smith gets his winner's ring as well. What a moment for this fella. Indeed so, of course. Traditionally, the captain of the winning side talks to the crowd, and here's Kevin Sinfield. I'd just like to say a few thank yous. First of all, thanks to Tetlis for a great competition. Thanks to Bradford for great opposition. It was really tough. We did it really hard out there. I'd like to pay a tribute to our full squad of players. Especially the lads who didn't play tonight. They've been fantastic all year. They're a big part of what we're about. A massive thank you to our fans. They've stuck behind us thick and thin. And this is for you tonight. This is your trophy. Lastly, I'd just like to thank our squad of players, our coaching staff, and everybody involved in Leeds Rhinos. They've been great, they've waited a long time, and now we deserve it. Thank you. Well, it's a big ask to speak as well as that after a grand final, but Kevin Sinfield was up to the mark, as were the Leeds Rhinos tonight. 
And in 2004, the Rhinos are the Super League champions. It's amazing, Eddie. That young man and the disappointment of being dropped for a Challenge Cup final. He has put that to one side. Remember, when he took the quick tap, instead of taking the penalty, they could have squared things in Cardiff, and it's fully deserved. He led by example out there. It was a different lead. Mental toughness was on show. The defence was outstanding. And they had the quality when they needed it. And they fully deserve the accolades. And boy, oh boy, they will celebrate for a long, long time. Thirty-two years. It has been the holy grail for Leeds. Now they will celebrate. And the party will begin. A fabulous night. The grand final at Old Trafford. The theatre of dreams. And this is a night that will live in the memory of these players, the coaches and the supporters for a long, long time to come. Remember at the start of the season, Eddie, we were at Headingley, and a lot of the fans said, is this going to be another false dawn? No, it isn't. It has been a wonderful year for them. They led the competition at the end of all the rounds by nine points. And the man in the background there, the coach, Tony Smith, what a moment for his family, for so often, for so long, his self and his brother, they just couldn't win the big one. The monkey is off the back of the Smith family. He has been superb. The Rhinos, <laughs> they're being led by the looks of things in their tribal chant and tribal dance. So there we are. The champions of Super League 10 are the Leeds Rhinos here at Old Trafford. There's the man of the match, he's got a watch to collect as well, Bill. That's right, Eddie, he's got the Harry Sunderland Trophy and uh, our man of the match award as well, and that must be absolutely perfection for you a night like this. Um, I'm lost for words at the moment. It's, uh, it's an unbelievable experience. It's something that, um, I'll be wanting more of, and I'm sure the team will. On that first try, I mean, a game as tight as that, it's turned out to be critical. Yeah, um, I don't score many, so when I do get over, it's always nice in a grand final. It's just extra special. But you were by no means safe until Danny got that last one. You weren't home oh, and dry, were you? Bradford were outstanding. The puzzle under some um, pressure all the way through the game, and it would nip and tuck all the way through. Danny scored that last try and sealed it for us. And, um, Delicious, but it's feeling it. you can't describe it, you can't put it in words. Well, you, you'll know how much this means to the club. You've been with Leeds since the days of your youth and through the academy. This is going to mean so much, isn't it? It is going to mean so much to the players, the club, and to the fans as well. They've had a lot of air over the last 30 odd years and to finally being a trophy home. I, I can't describe it, as I said earlier, you can't put it in words. Well, you've done pretty well. Well done, Matt, and go enjoy the party. Tell off to my daughter, Mia. Well done, Matt Diskin. A great performance from him individually. A great performance from this team collectively. There was a belief, you know, that this might be the year. When Tony Smith arrived, he had a wonderful squad of players at his disposal. And midway through, Ali Laotiti just added to the mix. Completed the jigsaw, maybe. And here they are at Old Trafford. Something that they have waited and waited and waited for. 32 years since Alan Hardesty last lifted a Rugby League Championship trophy. And they have done it tonight.